hello everyone who's watching this video wherever whenever you, you are doing it uh, my name is Mitchell Kuznetsov, I'm Russian journalist working for Sports Expressions paper but, and website, but actually it doesn't matter who I am <laughs> and whether you know me or not, because uh, you, if you like figure skating, you definitely know other participants of this discussion. Let me present you. It's uh, Kira Korpi, three-time European medalist and Russian Grand Prix champion. We remember your victory. Kiva Paiva. Kiva Paiva. Weaver, three-time world medalist, two-time four continents champion and two-time Grand Prix final champion. Good evening, I should say, yeah? Good evening. Yeah. Uh, and Elena Gedevanashvili, two-time European medalist. Gvardjoba, uh, Elena. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, lineup is very strong and I would say very global because uh, I'm in Moscow, Kathleen is in Tokyo, uh, preparing for her re rehearsal, and uh, Elena and Kira are in New York. Um, so, and yeah, just one more minute of opening ceremony. Like, uh, figure skating in Russia is getting more and more popular and now, and it's always interesting to see what people from different countries and skating cultures think about that. Uh, well, th that doesn't mean that we will not touch upon some concrete persons like Alina Zagitova, Brian Orso, for example, but uh, there are so many debatable issues, like global issues, for example, like, uh, I don't know, elements and components, minimum age, and we will try to cover all this with, like, limited time. Uh, and last thing uh, that I should say, we have so many people uh, and spectators here from different parts of the world so if I precise sometimes some simple things for someone uh, I hope that it is, it is okay now I shut up finally and uh, to start with um, Elena and Kira you are like retired I think uh, like for three or four years Kathleen your career is on hold uh, as I guess uh, what is your like what do you like and don't like in modern figure skating and has it actually changed throughout these years because in Russia thanks to technical progress and drama skating everything, everything changed a lot Whew. Yeah. So, what's to start yeah Kira <laughs> <laughs> okay um, well I stopped competing in 2015 so I guess it's almost five years um, and I feel like in these five years has happened so much. I, I don't think even the skaters themselves expected such a big uh, technical revolution, especially in the ladies skating. Like I remember being in the Helsinki World Championships in 2017 and watching the men's field that they were doing multiple quads in the pre-program and we were like, oh my god. And now we're seeing the same thing in, uh, in ladies skating. So definitely that is a big change in the single skating um, but yeah it's been interesting to follow follow skating uh, I have to admit that maybe one or two years after I uh, I stopped competing I wasn't so uh, involved and watching every competition but now I've been um, again watching more and more and obviously it is uh, fascinating and uh, the technical revolution is amazing but at the same time uh, it is concerning because we don't know about the long-term health effects of um, training those kind of very difficult elements so young. Yeah, uh, the same year. I think I I I, I last competed was in 2015, and um, to be honest, the same the same way. I um, I went to college after that, and I kind of stopped following figure skating so much. But I've been watching a little bit more lately because um, I'm willing to start start to coach myself a little bit, and um, it really has changed a lot. And I just, um, I just feel like it's it's really cool and it's amazing how how these girls can do quads and everything. But we also forget that they're, they're, they're little girls, you know. They're um, they're around like 15, like even 11 year olds are landing quads, as I know. Yeah. So that is definitely 
huge change compared to what we used to when we were competing. And um, as you said, it's it's super demanding on their bodies, and I'm not sure how ready their bodies are for this type of you know pressure and this type of um, jumps. Because well, and we also know that these girls do get injured regularly. So that's another another thing that should be concerned. Um, for me, I, the last competition that Andrew and I did was in 2019. Um, I feel like I have a different perspective because I'm an ice dancer. Um, so I don't know the feeling of being a single skater, and, and I don't know what, what it feels like to, to do these jumps. Um, but I love to stay up to date with the competitive scene. And, and this season, I've been I've taken a small step back because we're not competing. But um, for me, I, I again, I don't know so much about the technique of single skating, but um, the interesting or alarming thing for me is the psychological effects. And, and that's just what we don't know yet. And I know that Kira can attest a lot to this because um, she's studying it. But um, I'm, I'm curious as to what, what these... Um, athletes will look like when they're 30 and 40 years old and not, not only look like but think like and um, and so it's it's interesting for me to be involved in this debate I, I feel a little bit removed from it but um, been interested to see what what um, we're going to talk about here but what can be done about this like uh, there are some Concrete measures, for example, ISU can raise minimal age. Yeah, it's it's a decision whether it's bad or good. Should we do that, or uh, it should be balanced somehow in in a different matter in a, in a different manner? Um, well, I think first we would need a little bit more like scientific research uh, about the effects uh, both on the body and the mind. And especially those kind of long-term effects, I don't think we know much about. And of course, it's difficult to study because we're just uh, we're just like starting uh, this whole phase. But to listen to experts and, and scientists, I'm sure uh, some people who know physiology or psychology well, they can like um, give their opinions. Uh, and I hope the ISU is listening to them. Uh, and then. And, um, yeah, the age limit is one thing that I personally would be in favor, not just because of the, the jumps necessarily, just to have... A, um, just to have the athletes who enter the biggest stages to be a little bit more mature psychologically and, and physically too and then they can maybe or hopefully have a longer career because I think that's what uh, figure skating fans and even the skaters themselves would like to have a long athletic career like in so many sports the athletes can have many 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 years in the top and they can um, really like feel uh, self-agency in their own careers and be really responsible of their own professional choices and everything and I think it's hard when you enter the biggest stages in at the age of 15 or 16 to have that uh, cap uh, like capacity to take the responsibility and also to assess the uh, the risks and the effects of of that kind of professional training and demands. Okay, so uh, are you, yeah, do you agree? Do you agree yeah, with that? Yeah, I would be in favor. I totally agree with everything Kira said. Um, I would be in favor of raising the age limit. I just feel like it seems a little bit like a race right now. You know, who can who can get the most done um, at the young ages, and and it's hard to see. And I think in that same note. From an audience perspective, people, I think, in our sport, namely, get attached to personalities. And even in a couple years, even in the couple years that we've seen, I'm losing track of, of these of these wunderkind. And, like, they're incredible. And never to take anything away from them at all. You know, 
they're working so hard, they're earning the respect they deserve. Um, but it, it's hard for me because they're because it's it's hard to see them rise and fall out of the spotlight so quickly. And and if you take to me the greatest example of longevity is Evgeny Klushenko and the fact that he was there for so many years gives him notoriety, it gives him respect, it gives him power and influence in the in the sporting world in my in my opinion. Um because he's there, and you take Carolina Coster, Kira, like, I mean, all I, my favorite athletes, and to me, the ones that the public can really get attached to are the ones that are there for longer, and it's just, what can we do, what can we do for these kids to, to, to give them the longest shot, should they choose, it's possible. I, I totally agree too because these girls have yet to develop their style of skating and that's some, something that comes with maturity and uh, to skate, to be able to skate to a certain t- type of music to translate, translate the choreography because yes. but all we see it's just quads, you know like I'm watching the program and it's like it's awesome but it's turning into like tricks and uh, overall like let's see let's say with Carolina like I, 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 I would love to watch her even if she doubles in the program or even with Kikira and it's like that because you can actually enjoy their skating and then watch their um, and actually another thing like that you can follow their journey like follow, taking the excitement out of like following out this journey like developing like finding their own style you know and getting attached to an athlete and I think um, that's one of the most things to be able to stay in sport for a long time, that's what makes athletes great, you know, not yeah. But this this girls, um, as I can as I can as I'm based on the research that I have done, it's a couple of years and then they get injured, you know. And scientifically even they're they're so young and they're they're putting like just giant demand on their bodies and I know that their their weight has been controlled and they're not allowed to gain it anyway and these are girls who are fourteen and fifteen and this is when like you're growing, you're developing your your bones have to develop, your muscles have to develop and if you're not allowed to gain any weight, like how 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 how, how is that possible? how 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 is it healthy, you know? Because yeah. after all, when the sport ends, and then we have to live with this body to the rest of our lives. Yeah. Do you guys feel this is only a problem in ladies skating? I mean, I think in ice dance, maybe Caitlin, you know better. I think I, in ice dance, we see longer careers. Uh, I, I definitely think it. I mean, it's. <sighs> It's hard to argue, but I think that sometimes it takes, in I sense, it just takes time to get to that place, and um, and it's very, very easy to tell a mature I stance couple from a young, yeah. well, not, not to say age, you know, is the indicator, but um, a more immature team, and um, we definitely have far less demand in our bodies. I mean, there's injuries for sure, um, but longevity is, is definitely honored and respected, and um, I think that the youth is incredible, you know, the, the, the kids that are coming up, but there's a certain... Um, class I think that definitely is reflected in the results as well and it's harder to just up the technical your technical capacity because there's not that much room to grow anymore you know what I mean like as far as levels we can't do a quad let's like we are all doing level four twizzles we're all doing level four four you can increase the quality of the of the four to get your GOEs um, or elements and then the quality of your components um, but that's that's what we have to bargain you know it's not necessarily adding more and more difficult elements so it's kind of hard to compare compare the two yeah. if everyone agrees let me disagree just to make it more <laughs> fresh like uh, for example if if I am Alexander Trusova or Terry Tudberidze how could you explain to me that uh, we should uh, raise this age like uh, because I think Alexander herself she doesn't she doesn't have anything against uh, uh, jumping the squats. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, no. Working for her. <laughs> yes, sure. Yeah. 
then another thing is like this that they're, they're, they are very young and psychologically they, they don't really understand fully what's that have been placed on them you know what I mean and then when yeah. the, when they get to the age when they already understand oh like this is real like then they get the pressure on them and that's that's when some of them tend to fall off you know what I mean so I think it's because they just don't know but I don't want to say like they don't know better but they don't know enough about what's yet to come mm-hmm. I think I think it would be very interesting to talk to um Miss Tuta Bariti mm-hmm. and and see, and just to hear her opinion. You know, I, I think it's hard to, to assume her position. I mean, it's it's very clear that she has the results to back up her talent as a as a coach um, and her technique. But I, I would be interested um, because she has a young daughter who's an ice dance actually, um, who's who's battling everything that we're battling. You know, not necessarily quads, but who's in it and who is a growing woman and um, it'd be interesting for me to speak to her um, woman to woman and, and see how she feels about um, how these girls are developing um, into women and um, and what effect the sport, especially the intensity of the sport has on them. Have you ever had yeah. such an opportunity to talk to her? Never. Like in the competitions? Have you ever, like, Caitlin, uh, Caitlin, you have never talked to her, yeah, like, on the competitions for all these years? No. You no. <laughs> uh-uh. not, not about I think I would, I'm happy if I get a hello. <laughs> <laughs> Practice my rest. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think I would say to um, Eteri that she's a... Uh, an amazing coach. She clearly has a has a great. Uh, she was a nice dancer herself, right? Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. So she has this uh, beautiful way to uh, to build the music and the stories around the skaters, and she she has this sensitivity. And I'm sure, uh, in many ways, she's just a fabulous coach in the in the technical side too. So maybe. Maybe just to challenge her to think that uh, her training approach could start a little bit, um, I don't know, later, or somehow that she would uh, make a goal to to have the athletes peak a little bit later um, in order to have a longer career. And I don't know if that would mean that she would need to change the technique of, of the um, of the jumps in order to last longer, or to think about the. Um, how to how to get a girl's body into a woman's body in a healthy way and then to not be injured and to be able to do the quads uh, like Tukta is doing a quad at that age so we know it is possible so maybe just to challenge her if it would be possible to make the skaters um, peak later um, but yeah, I understand uh, uh, her perspective too. She is just u- utilizing the the rules, so it's not really her fault that she is making uh, the use of uh, the rules as much as possible. Um, so I don't, I don't really know what would the next uh, step be in this. Uh, I, I think it also. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, no, you go. But, um, yeah, I think it's like it's really amazing what she's done. Um, but we also know that these girls are kind of um, stop working. Like, I've, and she has uh, um, an athlete like over eighteen, even. You know, and it's just it's just a different type of training that she's doing. And we're obviously, like, I haven't um, really worked with her or anything, so I can't really say much about it. But from what I heard, I know that she's she's very rough, and uh, she has her own style of training, which is maybe I don't completely agree with. But yeah. Um, and maybe it would be interesting to ask how big 
because I guess uh, there is a big portion of athletes who break, and it would be interesting to ask, like, how big is the portion of of product? She even calls the skaters product herself. <laughs> so what is the rate of product that break uh, or get injured, and we never hear about them? And then we think, oh, she just produces these great skaters, and she does, but we don't see how big percentage goes to waste because they break in the process. Kira is already well known in Russia, but thanks to these words about products yeah, on Twitter, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. <laughs> Russian fans, I think they like it. Like, yeah, in Russia we have such a division as well on this issue. But let me like, take maybe like more... Everywhere I yeah, think. yeah, sure, sure. But uh, actually, uh, Kathleen, Lena, like, uh, do, do, don't you have the same uh, thing in Canada, for example? In, I don't know, in Georgia, maybe. Uh, like, uh, coaches tend to be strict. They need to be strict to get the results. And uh, well, in Russia, I think most people think that in Canada, like school, uh, uh, I don't know, the approach, yeah, general approach is more smooth, is more liberal. But is it true actually? Yes, I mean, I've skated. I, I grew up in Czechia, so yeah. I, I know, uh, I know all about the strict, strict style. But uh, I also know that it takes it to the to another level. Like, um, I, I had a honor of working with Tatiana Antonovna and I had the uh, honor of working with Elena Vatariasova and those were like my greatest years of co co competition you know and um, and I was also very young when, when I became good uh, but what I want to say is uh, when even when I was every athlete is individual and they're all different and I, I really don't think the same type of coaching works for everybody you know uh, um, the, well, obviously, like when you're younger, you're um, the girl that you obey and you do whatever they say, and, and everything that you're told, and you, you highly depend on your parents, and everything is kind of decided for you. You just kind of go on and do it, you know. And um, in in US, it's not exactly like that. It's kind of. Um, uh, yeah, it is that it is more liber liberal in a way, and uh, it's it is definitely like I want to say it's it's definitely like more 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 liberal. I don't have um, so much experience in Russia, but I did train in Novogorsk um, for a season, and and I saw the school, like the the young ones coming in, and they looked no more than three or four years old, and they they come into work and. It, it um, sorry, it differs from Canada. Like it differs from Canada. In Canada, you don't have this. Exactly. I mean. Uh, just speaking numbers, I think that it, it's probably comparable. I mean, so many children in Canada and the U.S. love, love to skate, you know. Um, I think there's a difference in the mentality, though, because at least where I come from, you know, your, your family gives up everything. It's the same sort of commitment. Um, I think that a lot of a lot of families honor um, like a renaissance child where you, you have sport and they're on the honor roll at school and they're in theater and they're in the debate team. And, you know, so there's so many things like that is impressive um, in, in North America, I feel. Also, I think that it's a little bit different when um, – it's not. I don't know how. I don't know how Russia, like how how the system is with um, if it's state sponsored. But I but I feel like the yes. families have agency to choose their coach. To say they they have weight in the decision making. Um, and so, I mean, there are so many coaches that are very strict and very strong. And I I've seen so many in ice dance and in singles. And I've been in a lot of rings around. And like it's it can be very cutthroat. Um, but it's a different it's a different mentality and, and when I was in Novogorsk I saw the, the kids coming in and I'm sure they're happy and I'm sure they're excited to be there but it was very it was business and 
that's something that I see a little bit different. It didn't look like play. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of research about play, the importance yeah. of play in a child's life, um, how that affects their brain. And I know that's a little bit of a different uh, tangent, <laughs> um, but uh, I'd say that would be a big difference between what I've noticed um, in different countries in, in my experience. Coming back to this debate around uh, like minimum age, maybe we have some other mechanism. For example, like uh, some some people, some coaches, they think that components are under evaluated, underestimated. Now, now in figure skating, maybe we can operate with this kind of things, not uh, changing the age, but changing the judging system. Well, ISU does it sometimes, but should it uh, should it do it? Like should it raise uh, the weight of components, for example? What do you think about that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the, what it is is that since the these girls are doing the quads, I feel like they automatically get high second score from what I see. And uh, I like, like I said, I just they just don't look mature enough like, to my eyes as a like women skating. You know, this we forget that this is women skating, and based on their age, they are junior. You know, like. Um, so I would I would agree to maybe raising the the component parts of skating or maybe um, having like programs that are a little bit more playful and not so technical um, to bring out more more the artistic side of of skating and something that people really really enjoy and not just you know going out there and doing tricks. To me, I think the argument becomes what's getting rewarded. You know, I think if you if you raise the weight of components and nothing changes as far as the judging panel goes, it's just going to be the same result but more points. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I do I do have a question like why, and I don't know a lot about this, but why is the ladies' components less than the men's? I'm not sure about that, but um, I think I think it comes down to. Um, judges education like I think it because back in the back in the day there were seminars and, and people would talk about the importance and what each component means and and I would never I would never say that the judges in place don't know that but I think understanding the the depth of the component mark and what each one represents and what each one is valued as you know it's it's easy to um, to reward a skater, like Elena said, that's doing quads across the board, components and technical, but is that really what's being performed? I don't know, and and I think that it's up to the judges to be able to decipher who's really the, the winner overall, you know, and, and that's the hard thing about skating is that it's judged, but I think it comes down to what's being rewarded. And that's what gives people the permission to be able to say, hey, if they just do a program full of quads, it's going to be fine, you know. Yeah, that's a good point, and I agree with that. Uh, and I think the new judging system has made our sport more objective, more like a sport, so we can measure the jumps and we can like give scores that people see, like where these scores actually comes from. Come from, um, but at the same time, the artistic side um, or the presentation and the performance side. Um, has maybe or is not maybe rewarded that much but again I don't know if just um, giving more emphasis on the components would change uh, change the results but maybe yeah I mean education overall is an effective uh, measure and also to really think about the whole philosophy behind our uh, sport and our training and, and and what kind of athletes we want or chil- like what kind of children we want uh, our sport uh, to grow up or no this can be cut <laughs> what, 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 what kind of uh, people uh, growing up in our sport like how is the environment for the children and for our athletes and 
not just the, what kind of athletes they become, but what kind of people they become, and, and, and how is the sense of community in our sport, how is the respect for each other as competitors, and sometimes I feel like it's almost a war zone, the whole, whole competing, and it's so dramatic, and it's like, and then we're like, it's just skating, it should like Kate May said and Lenny also mentioned play it should be especially for children I think it should be about play and having fun and enjoying and discovering not just who you are as an athlete but also as a person your characters your I mean it's um, it's this kind of uh, human centered approach that I would like to see uh, growing more in our sport too and I know uh, that it is gro- uh, a growing philosophy in in coaching and I see that in Finland in my own country that a lot of even the national team coaches in I don't know soccer or ice hockey they are using a very um, discussion based uh, models for for coaching and training and, and they try to involve the athletes at the very young age already in the decision making process and then we talk a lot about emotional intelligence and to really utilizing all your emotions now I feel like I don't know about you guys but I felt as an athlete I almost had to become this emotionless uh, machine and that was kind of the goal but I think Uh, as a human being it's hard to uh, um, feel free or or feel like internally well if you have to kind of um, cut off from your emotions and not feel any pain and just like always just like push through and every every training every week is uh, like a fight <laughs> You talk about that so openly. Well, the ICU has athlete commission, I guess. Uh, have you ever thought about like joining them, changing all this from inside? <laughs> you, you all. Um, no, I, well, I haven't. I haven't, and I think uh, uh, at least how how well I know the. Um, You know the structures of sport, and they are usually very um, uh, like uh, rigid in their ways. So I think that the athlete commission would be, uh, of course, one way. But I feel personally, and I've experienced this working as an advocate in the Finnish sports system, that I have more freedom to say what I what I really want to say when I'm not. Um, squeezed by the system and I have to be kind of loyal loyal to a certain system so I have more freedom uh, to voice my uh, opinions as I want to hmm. but I mean I don't say that that's, uh, that I don't want to work together with the ISU or I don't want to work together with the uh, uh, Olympic Committee or whoever organization but I just think that as a kind of freelancer activist I have more freedom Caitlin and Lena, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever, I don't know, you, you've never been I to haven't. athlete commissions, yeah. I I haven't, no, I haven't really like, talked, uh, I mean, thought, thought so much about it, but what I believe could be um, helpful is with education, like you said, like, we need to educate uh, uh, like young, young athletes about their body, because essentially like your body is your uh, I was saying, like I was saying, it's your weapon, and you need to know how it works. You need to know, like, what you're doing, what you're putting it through. If these girls are young, are like old enough to compete in Olympics and worlds and everything, they're old enough to be told that, that oh, this this is what's going to happen, you know. And sport doesn't last forever. I mean, we need to keep this party forever. No, I mean, not forever. But you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, you want to walk away from the sport and not, not be handicapped mentally and physically as well. And because, for, you know, for me, it took uh, a long time to kind of get where I am right now with in terms of my body image, in terms of my psychological health. I want to say that I am doing really well now, but there was, there was times when it was just really hard. Because once you um, 
she wants you to lose that love for your body and like the your body image and um and stuff like that. It's really, really, really hard, hard to get that back. And that's that should be like big message because uh, these girls are have not grown into their bodies and uh, not fully grown into their bodies and are like already full blown athletes um, on the level where they on the level that they're competing. And I just really think they're not ready, you know. And that's that's just my opinion. As and I, I was a young skater who uh, who became successful really young, and I, I know what it feels like to you know be up there, and then all of a sudden your body changes, and then you know you, yeah. you can't stop. You can only so much you can stop your body from changing. Yeah, and that's exactly what it should. It shouldn't. You should. Yeah. Like you need to work with your body, and if maybe if figure skating is not the right sport, then maybe you need to help your kids find the right sport, but find it fun again. Because it's not fun to abuse your own body, to not feed yourself, and to uh, just you know like become a robot. Because we are human, and we we continue to be human after the sport, and and this I just. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful, amazing sport, and I I remember um, when I was young, I used to love it. I used to love bowling, and then at some point, it was just like a torture for me to bowl tracks. You know, and it's like it's hard. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think the education point is good in a way, uh, in that way too, and then also in the way that what is, what is, for example, I mean, now we've been talking a lot about sexual abuse, at least in American figure skating, uh, but also what is physical abuse in sports, what is uh, emotional abuse in, in sports and in coaching, and those, those, those are kind of sometimes difficult to detect. Them, that if an athlete gets injured from overtraining, is that the weakness of the athlete or physical abuse by the coach who makes the athlete push too much? And uh, and also uh, emotional abuse is is so subtle. Like uh, if, for example, I think about this, um, some athletes who uh, who come to the top and then then. The next young younger product or younger skater comes up, and what happens to the older athlete who is too old or breaks from injury? The neglect, I think, that's a, that's a form of uh, emotional abuse too, and not to mention the the everyday emotional abuse that can happen in training, like uh, um, you know, like. Uh, 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 yelling, name calling, uh, shaming, um, uh, all these kind of things that are that have been a part of good coaching, but now, uh, luckily, people and the, the science says that it's it's detrimental to many athletes' uh, well-being. So luckily, this is is changing. But I think athletes need to be more educated that what is what is okay and what is not, because usually you just grow up since a very young child you grow up in the mentality that it's always your fault like if if I get injured of course it's my body that that's me oh, but you must have been away that's yeah. why I'm dumb now you know what I mean like that's I, that 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 that, that I am that first to your body yeah so yeah, that's okay. Okay. oh no no you can go ahead like I, I, of course like we need to we, we need to maintain a certain way in order to do our job like that, that that's Hundred percent part of it, but there's there's that extreme, you know, and then there's also that stigma that you have you have to be tough, you have to be uh, like you you can't you need to work through pain and you you can't take days off and, and stuff like that. But that that really takes the take, takes away the childhood, and I think that's really important for them to know like what type of sacrifice they're making. Uh, when uh, when I became homeschool, like when when coach decides, like okay, like uh, she, she okay, this athlete needs to cut, drop out drop out of school or became become homeschool. It's like um, that. I think that's a big responsibility because that that is something.
affecting a child's future because now this child is not going to have, um, you know, so, like I don't say like no, normal childhood, but uh, when, when you're an athlete, you can't really have a normal childhood. But they're dumb and reckless. Yeah. But there should be there should be some type of um, like boundary where it's okay and it's not it's not okay, you know. And, and, and parents they become so fanatic about this, they become exactly. yeah, they're influenced even by coaches sometimes as well. Uh, Caitlin, I, yeah, yes, you wanted to say something. No, I, mean, uh, I, uh, I think the hard part, though, and I and I want to remain optimistic as usual, but the hard part I think is that culturally everyone's different, you know, and and this is starting to change in North America, but you know. Russians are different than the Germans are different than the French are different than the Finnish you know and it's just like I think it's going to take these conversations to um, just to start talking about it you know and from different places and and I the, the hard part though is, is going to be finding finding that common ground with people um, and with families and again if, I mean if the families are making these decisions for the kids it's got to be something that seems worth it for them and you don't know what that is and you know so it's like I think that it becomes very very deep um, deeply rooted and, and kind of tough when it crosses boundaries uh, like nations you know what I mean and, I'm sorry that we talked so much about single skating. I should ask something about ice dance, actually. <laughs> but, but, but really, we, we, we discussed so much rules. Uh, but for example, at the World Championships, last World Championships, uh, Alexey Yagudin uh, told me that he doesn't understand, like he didn't understand what's going on in ice dance. Like I don't, I don't understand rules. How can I understand them? <laughs> Uh, don't you see the problem there? Like they should be more, how to say, comprehensible, maybe. Yeah. Um, Or we are too stupid. Like. Confusing. I mean, I think can be. I feel like I feel like this this issue um, can be said of, of all the disciplines now, just because the level is so high. Um, but really, it depends on the day. You know, it depends on it. If you can, you can have the same performance in a different panel and have a different result. Um, I think that's a testament to the quality of the skating at the top right now in ice dance, in particular. Um, that everyone's so tight, everyone's so good at the at the top. Um, but as far as as far as understanding it, it is very complex, and um, that's the, the pros and cons of, of the judging system. Is that uh, it's it's very detail oriented. Um, but it's it's tough for the public, and I think that's a different a different um, topic is is how to make it more audience friendly, and, and I know that the IOC is trying really hard to do that, the dance committee. Um, but it, it's a common comment um, that ice dancers get is that like what happened? <laughs> how did that happen? You know, and it's it's tough. Everyone, I I, I think that every judge has their thing that they like and that they want to see succeed um, and when everyone is doing level four everything then it really comes down to sometimes it comes down to preference you know and, and that's that's hard for everyone to agree on Uh, actually, our time is limited. I, I, I understand that we can talk eternally about figure skating. It demands much time. I have only two points to to touch upon. First of all, I, I would like to ask each one, uh, everyone, uh, don't you see that figure skating uh, has become a bit, how to say, conservative? For example, like in football, we have new tournaments, new rules, uh, many events throughout the world. Hockey, ice hockey, always they think something new leagues, replays uh, and figure skating it's almost the same, maybe it's my only my point of view, but like the same tournaments, same disciplines uh, don't you see that ICU maybe doesn't make show out of it yeah, I mean we have a team event that's 
new wish. The team event, I think, yeah. is something that that it's easy for people to get behind and root for their country, and it's a little bit. It's something. I think it's the most radical change, <laughs> radical addition. You know, like nothing that we've seen before. Skating awards, like uh, it's for the first time, but they already uh, they like provoked much hype. Even some I see skating award award. Uh, award. <laughs> But my uh, grow, growing up in uh, growing up in Moscow, they, they used to have a competition in elements when where we just competed uh, in like separate elements, and it was honestly that was I think that was fun. It could be it's, it, it's kind of like um, all all star. You know how they have in hockey they have like, all star tournaments when they go up and show off their skills, and I feel like if that was that that was added to it, then like more people would get a chance to shine and also uh, because we all have our own uh, own things that we're like we're, we're uh, certain things we're, we're good at and like we have our you know advantages you know I, mean? mm-hmm. I feel like yeah. right, I would get so more people chance to like more like, hmm? sorry it's like it's like having your distance in uh, as a swimmer or as a yeah. speed skater you know yes. you, like If you are good at the 200, that's like your money, your money shot, you know, opposed to like someone that has to be good. In skating, you have to be good at everything. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like if that that part was there, then it could it could be a little bit, a uh, little bit more. It would give more people a chance to, you know, stay motivated because now, if if you can't land, literally if you can't land points, like you can't, you, it, it's just you can't even go close. What do you mean? So you mean, Elena, that there could be a competition where uh, where they would measure the, who has the best layback spin. For example, yeah, like or it used, to, it used to be combo spin, used to be or each jump. Like first, you just compete in each jump, so like, and everybody needs to get like two tries, and you get the best out of like two tries, and then uh, the next person, the next person goes. And it's, it's it's really it's really exciting. It's like nerve wracking, you know. Like when you're just yeah. Doing, like, At the beginning of the century, yeah, they had uh, such tournaments in France, if I'm not mistaken, like battle of jumps or century. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. So it was like playoffs, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that I miss, something that I miss, um, and I refer to often on YouTube, are the World Professional Championships, where did values yeah. make yes, different? Yes, and like some of Tor and Dean's best, I mean, everything they did was yeah. good, but like this material came from the World Pros, and it's like yes, that's yeah. where you. Well, that's where the teams that didn't necessarily win an Olympic medal or world medal or didn't even go to worlds could go and and, and have their voice and um and I and I, I guess it had to be a money thing why it didn't, why it's not around anymore but to me that is so cool and I know that they have something like that in Japan in here don't they like they have a they program have, kind of they have everything in Japan yeah. <laughs> that's true and I, like that. What like that is so cool, and it, it probably came from the golden age of skating, like the ninety eighties and nineties. But yeah, that back to the stories and the purity and the artistic and or, or whatever it was to explore artistic, you know. Yeah, why well, I also I grew up watching professional skating and like Oksana even Oksana Bayou's some of the programs now like I I, I watch the what's competing in professionals and it's just it's a whole show, it's an art, you know, and it's uh and of Philip Candelaro, like his programs were always like so much fun to watch and think um In professional skating that's uh, that's something I would I would like to see also um, because as you know like yeah we, we retire but after uh, and after work to keep kind of like disappear out of the sport uh, yeah I like to the shows and stuff like that but um, I feel like that'd be cool to uh, for those who want to continue watching an athlete journey we got, we're going back to that like watching an athlete like change you know and instead of just going out there and you know, being out there for two years and then bam and somebody's gone you know it's it just even it's been hard for me to keep up like to be, to be honest I don't really know um, names of all these girls because it's, it's really been hard to keep up 
it's just going so fast, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, those sound like good, uh, good suggestions. And I mean, the ISU is a little conservative in in many ways. I would agree on that. Uh, but I think that the team competition was a was a fun add, and then maybe I I hope synchronized uh, skating would become an Olympic sport but uh, so at some point. I think for me, since I'm a, 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 I'm from a small country, and I would I, I would not have a team, so I wouldn't be able to participate in team competition. You know what I mean? I wouldn't have. And now yeah. there are beautiful ice skating team actually that like I'm really excited about. Um, but again, like we we haven't we haven't really had a uh, athlete in every discipline in a very long time. Yeah, I I think a lot of competition yeah. in the countries such as you know Russia, Canada, U.S., Japan, of course. You know. But then how about if there would be also like a, like in Japan Open there is a competition where yeah. there is Team Europe, Team yes, North America, yeah. and this kind of. Like the tennis uh, has a labor cup, maybe something uh, yeah. similar. I don't know. Again, like only um, only two like two two people out of the whole discipline get invited to that. You know what I mean? Two people from Europe. Two, I mean, from each discipline, and that's just, yeah, true. numbers are just too small in, for it to become more popularized. Yeah, and by the way, in synchronized sk- skating, you need like sixteen people or twelve person. Yeah, like I think Georgia can't afford it. I Actually, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, we, we, yeah. we have synchro teams and there have uh, been the competitions and stuff. And actually, uh, I, w- I would want to say in uh, in the college sports, synchro is val- valued more than in figure skating. Because mm-hmm. if you want to go to college in the United States, you, you can get scholarship if you're doing synchro. You can go to wow. Harvard has a synchro, synchro team, Boston okay. University, all the major sports, um, major uh, division ones, like Ivy League schools have synchro teams, but they do not. Have Karen, do you want to be on a synchro team with me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Please. Now we can get you know, like you can get some type of like return, but no. Nah. Yeah. So we are waiting for you in Beijing. I, I yeah. hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say about the conservative uh, or the the diversity aspect I hope that figure skating would spread more into countries like or continents even Africa I don't know if there is any skating or now with the South Africa yeah South Africa maybe uh, but now it's much more difficult with the technical uh, demands to get into the championships from small countries which I think it's kind of good but then at the same time maybe it's not good for the diversity uh, that we don't see uh, skaters from all over the world so much and I don't know uh, how much the ISU is putting efforts on on spreading skating and 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 seeing uh, uh, skating uh, in a very diverse way I know that they do help out, but this help I don't, uh, just not enough because I do come from the country where there was no figure skating. I mean, there was, but um, growing up, I, I began, began skating on a small, small like, recreation size ice rink, which is like half of the size ice rink. I had to leave my country in order to be able to even be on a regular standard size ice surface, you know? And um, it's, it's definitely a kind it's that, that 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 goes into a more complicated issue of a of a because when uh, when my president the president of my country um, in what was it, 2008 uh, he was trying to build ice rink in my in my country people were like why why are you trying to build ice rink when there are people hungry in the street you know and yeah that's 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 different that's kind of like the difficult to answer yeah difficult difficult to answer. Yeah. <laughs> More complex problem. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. is very expensive. Like, I would love to see it like spread and be more about that. Yeah. Uh, so. 
So it's an hour already. I, I don't, I'm not sure that we have more time because show uh, rehearsal. Uh, you, you have rehearsal now, yeah, Caitlin. It's. Uh, I, I finished it. I finished ah, it. And ran okay. back to my hotel. Wow! Wow! Great. It's here. Here it's uh, 10.30. Wow, inc yeah, incredible. Uh, actual last point that I wanted to ask you, maybe you have something to add, it's up to you. Like, we have European uh, championships in a dozen of days, then world championships. Uh, will you watch it? What is your like, general expectation? Maybe you are have your own favorite or you are waiting for some event uh, or some, I don't know, yeah, some event. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everyone, everyone actually. Yeah. But uh, as we have uh, two European skaters, I think it's better to ask them why European skating, especially single skating, is not that good now. Like if we like if we don't count Russia as Europe. Okay. Uh, why? Well, um, I was lucky that I I lived the period when that, when Finland was peaking at the European level and, and then came the Russian wave and really brought the, the sport to a whole new level. And I think it comes back to training and what Kate May said. Uh, she she saw three, four year olds uh, training like business with a business mentality, and really um, that makes probably the the biggest difference. That in Finland everybody goes to school full time, and it, the sport is not. Uh, uh, I mean, it takes a lot lot of people's uh, time, but not it's not so professional, so young. Performances, and it's hard to say only one skater that I root for because I think uh, everybody has something beautiful in their skating. Yeah, the same thing. I mean, I've been, I've been a little bit out, out, out of the loop from skating since since I went to college. I was kind of, uh, when, when I retired, I was just like, really like, out of it, out of it. Uh, but now, now well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to watch like all disciplines and see um, where everybody is. And so I, I, I don't, do not have any favorites. Uh, but I, there are still few skaters who are, who are still skating. Um, Katie, by the way, World Championships is in Canada. Will you be there? Not like a participant, I guess. But. I'm not there yet. I don't know if uh, I'll have a role there. Um, I, and if I don't, if I'm not there, I, I, I will watch because I know myself, but I, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, this will be our first world in nine years that we won't attend. So um, I think I might have mixed feelings about it personally. You know, like that's not to say anything about the, the skaters, but I mean, it's easy It's easy to say that the French, the um, Papadakis is your own um, our legends and they bring something so incredible every year and they have changed the sport of ice dance so um, I, I always really look forward to watching them and competing against them so I, I probably will be there but if not I, I will be supporting and um, I know that Canada is very very excited and supportive and um, enthusiastic about hosting the world championships and it's an incredible audience um, it's traditionally an audience so I think it'll be a great event um, but I also I also would be very interested to see now with the season away uh, especially watching live what the state is of the other events and, and you know watching skating live is so different than on, on a screen so um, I'll be anxious to see Caitlin, may, yeah, may I try to ask you, or you want to leave it off record, what are your plans actually for this next season? Uh, were you thinking about return? Because I, I googled, I didn't fi find anything about the future. Like, such a long 
career and, and looking back, we've accomplished so much more, I think, than we than we ever expected. And uh, and so I think we're looking at what skating is for us in our lives in a different way. And um, we are part of Battle of the Blades, the TV show. We're part of a lot of tours around the world right now, which is so great. And I'm growing a lot as a, as a person. Um, so I'm talking about like personal development. Um, it's still happening in our 30s. And so it's, um, it's an exciting time for us. I don't know what that means for our competitive career. I honestly can't, t- can't tell you. I will skate forever, you know, as long as I possibly can um, in one environment, I'm not sure. So as yeah. much as I can tell you. Yeah. That's a good point so, to finish, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to watch you skate. I have a you you guys are beautiful to watch. Yes, you are. And we need to go skating all together in New York. Yes! Uh, Dimitri, you're invited. Yeah, yeah, yeah Dimitri is invited. Yeah, wow, yeah, finally. But we have some problems with visa, you know. American visa is very hard to to get now. So, thank you so much.